Okay, kia ora everybody. We are going to get into our graduate panel. I hope you all enjoyed your workshops this morning. Um, I sat in on the Commission for Financial Capabilities workshop, some interesting work going on there. We are going to spend some time before lunch talking to four graduates about their paths, their challenges and what they've learnt on their journey from school through tertiary education or otherwise and into the workforce. Each of them is going to speak for about 10 minutes uh, and after that I would welcome your questions because I'm sure there's plenty that we can glean from them. So the code for this session is up on the slide so you know what to do, just plug that into the live Q&A element of the app and we will be away and if you don't ask any questions then it'll be whatever I decide to ask them so get involved. Uh, so on our panel today, we have uh, four very impressive individuals. Uh, the first is Meg Becker. She has a Bachelor of Agri-Science majoring in horticulture and now works for Turners and Growers Global, where she has developed a passion for growing and is learning from her mentors. So come on up, Meg. Uh, next, we have Haraina Tangiora. She has a Bachelor of Commerce and Supply Chain Management, International Business and a Master's Degree in Business Studies, and is now the External Relations Coordinator at Zest and she is passionate about helping others and also might, might just one day save your life because she is currently training to become a surf lifesaver. So please welcome Haraina. Uh, next on the panel, Hannah Cox. Hannah has studied social media marketing at EIT. She is a new mum and works at the Art Deco Trust here in Hawke's Bay, coordinating tours and volunteers. So come on up, Hannah. And last but not least, Sam Reynolds, who after starting out on a commerce degree, changed tack to media, film and communications, started an internship in marketing, but says he wasn't a fan, and ended up in farm management in Africa. Uh, so I'm sure he's got some very interesting stories to tell, uh, especially because he describes his career path as one of a blindfolded, drunk, three-legged donkey. So please give Sam a warm welcome as well. So I believe we are starting with Meg, so take it away Meg. Hello. Heading off to Massey to study animal science with a family background in pig farming, I had no idea that I would wind up in the horticulture industry. After my first year at Massey, I was on the hunt for a paid practical experience within the sheep and beef industry. To no avail, I was on the brink of accepting my fate when a family friend suggested I approach the local pack house. I landed a position on Ongateti Call Store's technical team for the summer of 2015. I was given a really broad introduction to pollination, crop loading, kiwi green pest monitoring and maturity sampling. Heading back to Massey, I changed my major immediately. Joining the Massey Hort Society, changing my electives, applying for scholarships and diving headfirst into this industry I suddenly felt so passionate about. One slide. Um, I obtained scholarships from the Taiwan Education Trust, Hort New Zealand and TNG Global. <coughs> Sue Pickering from Hort New Zealand paired me on a mentorship program with Andrew Lockyer from TNG. Within five minutes of meeting the bloke, I had landed myself a summer internship with TNG Global Pit Fruit Technical Team here in the Hawke's Bay. A year later, at the 2017 Hort New Zealand Conference, I was offered a mentorship with Barry O'Neill. This opened up a wide range of networking opportunities for me. Spending a week with him at Kiwi Fruit Vine Health in the Bay of Plenty, I had the privilege of spending the day with his team, quizzing them on their roles, backgrounds within the industry, and career opportunities that I didn't even realise were possible. They explained to me how the single desk system operates and showed me around a kiwi berry pack house, kiwi fruit orchards, and took me to a pollination seminar run by Zespri. I became passionate about raising awareness within the horticulture industry, assuming the role of Massey Hort Society President in 2017. Through this, I worked closely with my team, Erin Simpson, the Capability and Development Manager for Apples and Pears New Zealand, and the team at Massey to build a strong foundation for the membership base of the club and kickstart annual events. Through this, I had the opportunity to travel around the Lower North Island, Motueka, uh, learning and looking at horticultural systems that keep these areas thriving. Networking with industry professionals across all sectors. 
After much deliberating, tossing up between several job offers without even applying for a single role, I ranted down the phone to one of my mentors about the dilemma. I didn't know which opportunity I should take and what, which one would offer more to me. When I finally stopped talking, she suggested I may have already made up my mind. I found the pit fruit industry to be adaptable, innovative and challenging. And without a doubt, I was excited by the opportunities that T&G could offer to me. I was offered an opportunity on the T&G graduate program, working on the largest 2D production block in the North Island at the time. My passion being growing, biology and scientific research, the role was perfect for me. Some opportunities I've had within T&G include the internal young grower competition, enabling up and coming young growers to test their knowledge and challenge the way that they think. I've now competed in this twice, coming second both years. This also competed, I also competed in the Gisborne Regional Young Grower Competition this year. This gave me a taste of what to expect at a regional level. I was also given the opportunity to network with other young growers from a thriving horticultural region and challenge my knowledge in an unfamiliar environment. The TNG graduate programme has a strong focus on self-awareness, culture, teamwork, project planning and networking. This has helped me come to terms with the way I handle my teams, the way I relate to the people I work alongside, and it has tied in really nicely with the challenges that I've faced since entering the workforce and how I can better manage myself as a person. The management team at TNG have worked really hard to uh, develop a programme called The Future Leaders, aimed at developing st teaching staff with an interest in growing, giving them the tools and knowledge to challenge concepts and the way they think in order to start making production decisions, provoke thoughts and inspire young minds. There are also other regional groups uh, for growers, including the Hawke's Bay Young Orchardist Group and the Leaders of Tomorrow, also helping challenge these thought processes within an ever-changing and adaptive industry. It assists with networking with professionals across all areas of horticulture. I was really lucky earlier this year to partake in an International Horticulture Immersion Programme, otherwise known as IHIP, and it's definitely the biggest career success that I've had to date. Uh, Travelling to the Netherlands, Belgium and South Korea uh, in July on the pilot programme, I found my goals refocused and ambitions re-inspired. I arrived back in New Zealand with a whole new appreciation for our industry, our strengths and weaknesses, the challenges that we face and how we can actually start to overcome these. The environment within the IHIP team was exceptional, with ideas thrown around our education bus as we unpacked each visit on the way to the next, coming up with insights and action points that we could utilise when we brought back to New Zealand. I saw the importance of absorbing other, others' thought processes and hearing their experiences before I thought formed my own ideas. The communication within and across the European sectors was inspiring to see that that level of collaboration within such competitive markets with all businesses and sectors achieving in their field of expertise. In the Netherlands, we had a strong production and innovation focus, looking at the world's leading technology and how this can be utilised to optimise farming practices. In Belgium, we shifted our focus to the European Union, marketing schemes, consumer trends, and we went to a fully mechanised post-harvest frozen processing plant. In Korea, we had introductions to the New Zealand Embassy, its structure, market access, Zespri Korea, and the marketing schemes, including how they utilise the supermarkets within their sales strategies. We also had an introduction to the Korean pit fruit industry, seeing firsthand how they grow TNG varieties. I found this particularly interesting, relating the differences between the two countries and the way production has had to be adapted to suit the environments and the market demand. Having thrown myself headfirst into the production side of the industry, I was fascinated by the business, marketing and political aspects that I had no idea about. Zespri's marketing initiatives of selling a service or a lifestyle, vitality. They weren't selling a produce. 
the history of the EU, how it operates, and the predicted impacts of Brexit, how the EU facilitates collaborative culture, and this is still held today. My goals were originally based around a foundation of wanting to learn the industry from the ground up. When I finished my degree, I felt the importance of learning how to grow. The passion for growing has morphed my long-term goal of wanting to be a knowledgeable, well-respected grower with the ability to take risks and challenge concepts. To achieve this, the importance of surrounding myself with mentors that show attributes that I one day hope to hold myself is significant. Alongside growing, I aim to one day work in the space of extent knowledge extension to industry, enhancing the availability of intellectual property to growers in a translatable language. Challenges I have faced... Oh, sorry, I've completely forgot about my slideshow. <laughs> This is the pathways and opportunities. <laughs> it's all been talked about. <laughs> um, these are just some photos from the IHIP. Um, we've got at the top uh, vertical farming. Um, that was a, a research facility, but it's actually been commercialised now. Um, and they were all full of Philips lighting. Um, I think there's a pointer here. That's a distribution centre in Belgium and one of the largest ports in the world. Um, that's TNG Varieties, uh, all in that photograph. So we were wandering through, marvelling at that. Um, these are a bunch of university students that we met while we were overseas and we sort of heard their experiences, how their degrees had helped facilitate them. And they were doing a group project designing products and commercialising those products before they finished their degrees. Um, this was the Zespri campaign in the supermarkets. They were doing a sweet green campaign, which I didn't quite understand to start off with. Um, but once they'd explained the concept to us, I was, I was quite fascinated, because I've always considered green a sour kiwi fruit, And they taste exactly like gold. It's incredible. Um, and that was on the port. That was probably the most amazing experience of my life. Um, we'd never get that opportunity in New Zealand. <laughs> we were right on the front of the port. And they told us that they only allowed small ships up onto, um, into the canals. And this ship was larger than any ship I've ever seen. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> challenges I have faced along the way have helped me grow uh, as a member of my team and have assisted my transition, I'm not having much luck with this, into this sector. My biggest challenges to date include learning how to manage, interact, motivate and inspire members of my team showing compassion, self-awareness, and managing different personalities, I finally found my feet. I take great pride in watching my team's growing, growing passion for the industry and see how far we have come together. Implementing my theoretical knowledge into practical skills has also improved, uh, proved challenging. Despite the two lying close together, visualizing scientific processes how the trees actually respond to management practices and being lenient to environmental factors has been prominent. I've brushed over many of my career highlights already. The IHIP program, pilot program has been my biggest celebration and the most career impacting so far. The TNG graduate program, the support I've received throughout my degree from TNG, Horticulture New Zealand, industry bodies, the Massey faculty, and local horticultural companies has been overwhelming. Since entering the workforce, TNG have supported me through my challenges and my successes, helping me with both personal and professional growth, giving me networking opportunities, offering an incredible foundation for starting off in the pit fruit industry. Thank you. Tēnā koutou katoa, ko Taki Te Mutuaka, ko Kahurana ki Te Maunga, ko Pokawa Te Waiu, ko Ngāti Kahungunu Te Iwi, ko Ngāti Whātoi Āpiti Te Hapu, ko Hapuku Te Tangata, ko Harana Tangiora Aho, kei Zespri O e Mahi Ana e Mahi Kawana pia koutou katoa. Kia ora. Kia ora. 
Kia ora everybody, I'm Harana and it's an absolute privilege to be able to speak with you all today um, and come back to the beautiful Hawke's Bay, which is where I have very strong whānau connections to, um, as I'm sure you just heard in my pipiha. so thank you for having me. So I grew up in Christchurch, um, which meant spending along with my primary years, my first two years of high school, I my first two years of high school at a school called Villa Maria College before begging my parents for the best part of those two years to go to boarding school. So um, clearly my begging paid off um, and I ended up going to Nelson College for Girls boarding school for the last three years of high school. And boarding school was a place where I made incredible friends for life. Um, I learned a lot of skills and I especially learned how to be more independent. But with the anticipated yet also feared year 13 end coming, um, it was time I made some decisions. What should I do next? And it was at Nelson College for Girls, I remember this quite vividly. Um, my friend Rachel approached me and said, can you please come to the Lincoln University Careers Expo stand with me? Um, I want to study agriculture because she was from a dairy farm. So I thought, OK, she's just going to study cows, whatever. I'll be a good friend and I'll go along with her. Um, I moved back to Christchurch after studying at Nelson Girls to Lincoln University where I completed my Bachelor of Commerce in Supply Chain Management and International Business. Now obviously from that last story, this was not my intended degree or my intended university, um, but I'm so glad that I ended up going there as it really opened my eyes to all of the vast opportunities that exist within the primary sector and it was just really a great place to study. Um, it was at Lincoln yeah, that I developed that true passion and just opened my eyes a bit more and I knew that after the three years I spent there um, that I really wanted to end up in a career that was working for a New Zealand business that exported primary products globally because the primary sector is so important to New Zealand as a whole. I was therefore extremely stoked to end up with a graduate program position at Zespri in 2016 and like falling into Lincoln University I also kind of fell into this horticulture industry um, because one of my lecturers said to me, have you heard of the Zestry Graduate Program? You should apply for it, they're a really good company. And since I really respected that lecturer, I took his word for it and here we are today. So I started at Zestry on a graduate program position in 2016 where I worked in the supply chain department. This was a great place to start because I was able to get the chance to see the whole kiwifruit supply chain from beginning to end. And on the graduate program, we spent a week at Plant and Food Research, which is where the Sun Gold kiwifruit is bred, and there's some outside um, if you want some after this. Um, we spent a week picking kiwifruit on an orchard and a week in one of our post-harvest facilities learning how the fruit is graded, packed, stored and then loaded out and also had the opportunity to have a tour of the port of Tauranga and yeah, again, didn't get that close to the ships. Um, but we're allowed to go on a ship and look around the vessel, which was pretty fantastic as well. Later on that year, I was also extremely privileged to be able to see the other side of the Zespri supply chain, um, travelling to Europe, to Belgium, to Zeebrugge Port, which is our main repack facility in Europe, um, visiting a packaging experience centre and also supermarkets in the Netherlands um, and a fruit trade conference down in Italy. So some pretty cool experiences off the bat in my first year of the graduate programme. And throughout the graduate programme, we were also introduced to people from all over the Zespri business, and those relationships are still so critical today. Um, I was then fortunate enough to gain a permanent position in the supply chain team in the global packaging, which again gave me that, oh, that next opportunity to learn more about the complex system that is trying to send um, kiwi fruit to over 50 countries around the world and have it arrive in all of those countries in the perfect premium position. After two and a half years in the supply chain team, where I was truly able to learn the whole Zespri story and the Zespri system, I felt like I wanted a bit of a change and to maybe move into something a bit more people focused as I felt like that was one of my strengths. Um, I, despite having no experience in this area, I thought I would just give it a go and put my hand up anyway, and so I was definitely stoked when I did get the position that I'm currently in, External Relations Coordinator, and I think that's one of the really cool things about working at Zespri is that people move around teams and departments all the time. Um, our current CEO was the Head of Sales and Marketing and was in Operations before that, and our CEO before that was the Head of HR, so yeah, that's just a couple of examples of kind of the lateral career shifts that people always make at Zespri, which is very cool. And external relations, the team that I'm in at the moment, is a super diverse team in Zespri, and I love the diversity. So one day you could be at a random function in the beehive, and the next day down talking to Māori kiwifruit growers in Te Kaha, 
which is down the East Cape, um, to just having coffee meetings with lots of community good organisations just down the road from work. So the variety suits me massively. I get to meet heaps of new people and I'm always, always, always learning, which is a massive priority for me. Um, and also we have the tours, events and communications teams as part of our wider team. So often we get to interface with those work streams too. So it just gives you a good overview of yeah, the whole industry and the whole company, which is really cool. And I thought just to kind of summarise some of the amazing experiences, not all, but just some of them that I've had in my time at Cessbury. Um, so the working from the top left and around clockwise, this is the release of our first kiwi bird coda for gold, not crayfish, um, into the wild in Otane Wanuku Forest. So we partner with a kiwi trust up the back of Te Puke, um, who help and are doing an amazing job of keeping kiwi alive in that forest. Um, and since the release of Coda, we've also been able to release two others, Izzy and Sunny, um, into Aotearoa Wanuku, and they're always named by our staff and growers. So that's that's very cool. They love that. Um, next one is my manager Amy and I at the Meningate Ceremony in Ipa in Belgium. Um, so earlier in the year, we took a Māori grower to a delegation to Europe, which was centred around the 75th anniversary of the 28th Māori Battalion going through Monte Cassino. Um, and while there, we were also able to take them to uh, Italian growers, Italian post harvests, and the port as well, and just to see how they're growing kiwi fruit on that side of the world. Um, and one of the true highlights for me was that Italians also said, no, we don't sell our land, we pass it down through our generations. And so the Māori um, growers that were on the tour were able to really resonate with that. Um, next one along, that's me racing my colleague Sarah down to the finish line um, at our Diabetes Awareness Program at a primary school in the Mount. So we've run this program in three schools now and we're always focusing around the healthy messages of eating more whole foods, drinking more water and moving more um, and trying to instill it in the kids at a young age. Very simple messaging and trying to keep it fun um, so that hopefully they can encourage their parents and grandparents to do the same. And we always finish with a fun day of activities like that where the staff has just as much fun as the kids. Um, and then that is me speaking to a group of young Māori horticulture students and workers who were just wanting to hear a bit more about the Zespri story. Um, this is myself and my colleague Jack at the University of Waikato Tauranga campus, brand new, Careers Expo, earlier in the year giving out sun gold kiwi fruit and I wish someone gave me sun gold kiwi fruit when I was at uni, um, but the sausage sizzles were pretty good too. <laughs> and then f uh, sixth and finally, this is Jessica, one of our Māori Kiwi Fruit Grower Reps and I at the National Surf Life Saving Awards of Excellence in Wellington earlier in the year. And clearly I was I'm so inspired by this organisation. So we sponsor the training of lifeguards from Coromandel down to Gisborne. Um, and my manager and I always get to meet with these lifeguards and attend their awards. And yeah, so inspired that I'm currently training to be a surf lifeguard. So <laughs> wish me luck. <laughs> And so, of course, there's been some challenges along the way, but those challenges have also been outdone by all the opportunities available to me too. So I think, yeah, transitioning from university to working full-time is a challenge that anyone is going to face, um, no matter what, where you come from, where you're going, what you're doing. Um, leaving all of my whānau and friends behind in Christchurch to relocate to Tauranga, not knowing anybody, um, but I love it there now. And finding out what I'm truly passionate about has definitely been some of the harder challenges for me up until now, and I know there's gonna be way more into the future, um, but the opportunities have also been vast. And so I'm truly lucky to work in an organization in an industry that's glowing, growing and dynamic. Um, I get to meet and interact with new people all the time, and you get stuck into all sorts of things, like Meg said, so organising um, networking and personal development events for future leaders in horticulture, to attending um, a Te Hono Stanford boot camp at Stanford University earlier in the year with 70 other primary um, industry leaders was pretty fantastic. So I guess to sum up, the primary sector um, is critical to the success of New Zealand as a whole. There's so many opportunities existing within just horticulture, um, and we've punched above our weight for a long time in terms of our primary exports, so that just means there's so many opportunities for anyone who wants to come and check it out for themselves. Um, Kiwi fruit's just one part of it, and it's just one part that I've become extremely passionate about in my four years at Zespri, and I think for the sector to keep thriving as it has been, we can't keep doing the same things and expect to get better results, so we need young, bright and talented young Kiwis coming through, sharing their insights. The world is changing faster than ever, and the consumer is changing why we're consuming, how we're consuming, and what we're consuming. We need the future consumers um, to come and help us tell those stories. So thank you very much. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, kato.
morning everyone. Um, I'm Hannah and I work for the Art Deco Trust here in Napier. Um, a little bit different, I'm in the tourism sector compared to primary industries, um, but nonetheless important as well. Um, you'll have to forgive me, I'm going to read off my paper a little bit, um, but here we go. So I didn't always grow up wanting to work in tourism. Um, when I was in high school, I didn't even know that tourism was an option, here in Hawke's Bay especially. Um, I found my high school didn't really prepare for us for tertiary unless you were heading off to an actual university. I wanted to stay in Napier, so I knew that I was going to go to AIT. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive to leave my mum behind, so AIT was a really good option for me as I could study in Napier and um, have my mum help me as well, which was really important. I decided to do teaching first and foremost because that's what my mum was. Um, it didn't work out for me. I had Life got in the way and I dropped out after two years. I spent a few years mucking around, being an adult, enjoying life as you do when you're 18, 19, 20, um, but decided that I should probably do something a little bit more with my life. Um, so I went to EIT again and I did a certificate of business admin skills. Um, and that's where I had to do some work experience and I chose here the Napier City Conference Centre or what it used to be known as the War Memorial and I followed the event management staff round and just saw what they did and I thought to myself I can do that, that looks like fun. Um, I wanted to be just like them. So then the next year after I finished that I decided to do my Diploma of Tourism and Travel again at EIT. I'm addicted to that place I tell you. <laughs> They're probably sick of me already. Um, and I loved it, I found what I wanted to do. I loved tourism, I loved travel, and I wanted to be an event manager or an event staff. So I did my first year, and then in my second year, we had to do 60 hours of work experience. And I ummed and ahed, because I didn't know where I wanted to go, and I approached the Art Deco Trust. Um, they had a brand new festival director, Glenn Pickering, who doesn't work there anymore, he works for the Opera House in Hastings. And he was cool, he was awesome, he was bright and vibrant and funny and I was like, yes, that's me, I could do this. Um, and so I did 60 hours work experience with him. I learned how to do more of the basic admin skills with him for preparing for Winter Deco, which is a little shindig we have over June, July. Um, events and vintage cars and you name it, we do it. And that was really fun. And I was like, oh my gosh, like what a cool place to be in. They have all these volunteers and they have this staff and they have this, this amazing family of people that they all just work together. And oh, it was great. I loved it. I loved every second. And towards the end of my work experience, I was working at an event with Glenn and I mentioned that I didn't like my job where I was. I was working part time uh, doing admin somewhere. And he said that the staff in the shop were looking for some extra help on cruise ship days. And I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fun. What a way to get my foot in the door. Cruise ships, cool. So I did, I, I worked uh, with the shop staff and the guides, um, the volunteers in the shop, and that was really cool. And it, but it was part time, I think it was like two days a week, casual. My contract was supposed to end in March and the walks and tours team approached me and said, would you like a job as our tours assistant? And I was like, yeah, cool, awesome. Um, so I started as the tours assistant in March 2017. I've been there ever since. Um, but the tours assistant role was a lot of fun. I got to work five days a week, full time in summer, with the most amazing people you could ever think of. The, the volunteer guides at the Trust are sensational. Um, they give up their time to take people from all over the world and all over New Zealand on walks around our little city, um, telling them about the beautiful architecture and the history behind Napier um, and about earthquakes. And they were just the best people to work with. Every day is different. Um, you learn a lot from them. I thought I knew so much about Napier. I was born here. I went to school here. I was like, I know everything. I know everything about Napier, but you really don't until you've probably talked to every 100 of them and then you might know half of what they know. Um, but lots of fun. And then I, I was there for, a, for about a year maybe, a year and a half, and um, I decided that I'd have a baby because that's what you do when 
you've been at a job for a year and a half, you have a baby. <laughs> Why not? Um, so I actually had, I've just had six months off um, and I've just come back into a brand new role at the Trust. I'm the logistics coordinator, um, which sounds very fancy, but I do rostering. Um, I help the guides again, but at a, at a different perspective. I help them get set up before they come in. Um, doing timesheets for cruise ships, because obviously we get quite a few. I think this year we're at about 88 cruise ships. We just had a big one yesterday, and it was my first cruise ship back, so it was a bit daunting, but lots of fun, because it's all full on, and I was just running around like a headless chuck, but you get back into it after a while. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite different. Tourism in Hawke's Bay is amazing. I wish I had known about it from day dot, rather than going through all the different things, but also I think that testing things out make you into the person you are. Um, it's, an, it's an amazing career um, in, in, every, in New Zealand in general. I mean, we have some of the most beautiful places I've ever seen, um, but really hard to get into, especially in Hawke's Bay. There's not that many job opportunities for graduates. Um, I was just really lucky that I managed to fall into a job um, and have just kind of glued myself in there so they can't get rid of me. Um, I am hoping to do a bit more study to help them further because we're a non-profit organisation so money's zero. Um, we rely on grant funding and you sort of just dabble in bits and pieces and muck your way through um, but I would like to do a social media marketing degree, I haven't quite got there yet. Um, my six month old kind of keeps me on my toes <laughs> um, but that is my future my future goal is to do that so that we have more hope of spreading our, our word and our mission further afield. Um, I actually also forgot about my slideshow. <laughs> I don't know how this works. Do I just push play? Yeah. <laughs> um, so I went to Napier Girls High School. So as I said, born and bred, great school. Um, and then my certificate of business studies followed by my diploma of tourism and travel. Um, a little bit about me and my working life, which I think I've been over. One of my walks. Um, so if you're ever in Napier and you have a free hour to a two hours, definitely come find me and you know, get you on a walk. It's amazing, you learn so much. Uh, me, I did some photos for EIT. I don't always look like that. <laughs> Just a candid photo, you know. Um, there are lots of challenges about working in tourism in Hawke's Bay, but the opportunities and the benefits and yeah, it's amazing. I'm really lucky. And that's it. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Sam. I didn't realise they were going to read out the part about the drunken three-legged donkey <laughs> at all. I'd actually written that as a way to kind of put them off selecting me. Come on, I'm not one to talk about careers. Anyway, uh, so that's Hugo. He was my pet chicken when I was in Tanzania. And we'll come back to Hugo. He's heavily involved in this. <clears throat> so we start from the beginning. I was educated at Lindisfarne College in Hastings. Um, I'm from a farm in central Hawke's Bay, but talking to Dad and Mum, we kind of thought that I'd eventually fall into farming, so why not do something else first and study something else and you know, broaden yourself? Yeah, we'll, we'll find out what happened. So <laughs> at Lindisfarne, obviously went through the careers guidance process and they said, highly unhelpful, that basically I could do anything I wanted. So I went to another careers uh, lady who told me that I could be a lawyer, a truck driver or a doctor. Like, so anyway, I did the mature thing and did a gap year to work out what I wanted to do. Um, I played rugby in America for six months, travelled around Canada, Europe, bit of Africa, great. By the time I got to Otago University for my course planning, I, I'd completely forgotten what I'd applied for last <laughs> October. So I was still as clueless as ever. So I started doing a Bachelor of Commerce in Finance um, and a Bachelor of Arts in History. Uh, I ended up with a Bachelor of Arts in Media, Film and Communication <laughs> and a Graduate Diploma in History and I'd done half of a Commerce degree, half of an English major. All of the points counted towards my degree so it was highly useful. 
um, and I did, I forgot a slide that's coming here. But basically, after university, I then went and got the job that my degree got for me, which is involved in marketing in Auckland. Uh, so working for OMD, which is one of the larger media agencies up there. I lasted two months. I didn't really like what they did. It was not very tangible. It was a lot of background work for everyone else. And I looked at the people above me, and I thought, no. So um, <laughs> I, I ended up going to Africa. I have some family ties to Africa. Um, and started, well, I drove a car from South Africa up to Tanzania. Uh, and on that road trip, I was offered a job to manage an island that sits between Zambia and Zimbabwe. So you, you literally have to boat to the island. Uh, so I looked after an island for a while, um, for a month or two. I then made it up to Tanzania and I looked after my auntie's farm while she went on holiday for a while. While I was there, I was offered a, a more proper job, um, managing a farm for the Clinton Foundation. So I ended up managing, or assistant farm manager, on about a thousand hectare commercial farm for Bill Hillary and Chelsea Clinton. In the farm we grew maize and lots of other crops. Basically made money that would support our small holder program. So the small holder program was 10,000 local farmers who were signed up. We gave them access to better seed, fertiliser, access to market. Um, yeah, it was very interesting and highly rewarding but also extremely frustrating being involved in American politics. Um, Hillary was running for president at the time and it just it got in the way of what we were trying to do. So after about two years, I got a bit tired of that. Um, and, oh, there's my team. Um, what am I leaving do? <laughs> <laughs> so I had, I should probably talk about this for a while. I had um, 10 permanent staff and anywhere up to 100 part-time. And you'd have to choose different tribes. So there's some guys up there who are from the Maasai tribe. Um, and then Kikuyu and Chagu, because uh, if you all had from one tribe, you created some, yeah, some cultural issues and, and things went missing. So <laughs> it was, in terms of dealing with people, it was highly rewarding and it teaches you a lot of patience. Um, I speak Swahili or interme intermediate level Swahili. So <laughs> after Africa, somehow I ended up in Italy. <laughs> growing baby leaf spinach for UK supermarkets. So our company had farms in the UK, Italy and Spain. And we would grow spinach 12 months of the year in the different locations and truck it back to the UK. That was basically farming on steroids because you do your spraying, planting, harvesting, things you do once a year on a normal cropping farm basically. You're doing it almost every day of the week, um, seven days a week. So I learnt a lot. Um, it's some beautiful spinach. <laughs> that was, uh, so I did six months in southern Italy, or a bit longer, and then um, they transferred me to another farm in Wales, kind of Wales, England, and then I did that for about 18 months uh, over there, which was, oh, oh, I can't go back. Can I go back? I'll get back to that one. Um, anyway, the spinach was highly rewarding, again, but very high paced, big company, dealing with supermarkets, not particularly nice at times. Uh, so I'd been away for about five years at that stage and I'd kept an eye on Bostock's, the company I work for now for a while while I was overseas. I like what they do in Hawke's Bay and I had a meeting with them once, once when I came back for holiday and said, I like what you do, um, I'd like to work for you one day and they said, great, um, which is highly positive. But <laughs> <laughs> so when, when you want to come back, basically um, we'll sort out a job for you. So I gave them a year's notice and then uh, did a little bit more travel on the way home and then came back. Just a, This is Chook, she's my puppy. Now Hugo, who was in the first slide, we remember the pet chicken. Hugo was actually killed by a snake. Um, R.I.P. Hugo. Slightly my auntie's fault, she was at my auntie's farm while I was on holiday, but we don't, I don't hold it against her. <laughs> I do. Anyway, so when I moved back to New Zealand, I got a dog and she's named Chook after my pet chicken. <laughs> all makes sense, all highly relevant. <laughs> uh, so now um, I manage the organic cropping division for Bostocks. So Bostocks is probably better known for the apples. We're the largest organic apple producer in the Southern Hemisphere. 
but we also have a big cropping department. Um, yeah, 350 hectares of organic crops. It's the largest cropping operation, organic cropping operation in New Zealand. I thought that I was meant to talk about the provinces a wee bit. Yeah? Yeah. So, part of the reason I enjoy being in the provinces and what happened here, um, yeah, Hawke's Bay's got a lot going on, as we've already heard. But for me, I mean, I could be fly fishing, playing cricket, going to the gym, going to cheap yoga, within half an hour of leaving work. I don't know why cheap's in there quite a lot, isn't it? That's not, not a reflection of myself, it could be. <laughs> um, traffic, my commute's normally 10 minutes, or it's 11 minutes with traffic. Um, again, I've been able to buy a house this year, and it, I'm not, it's not a real ball and chain, I can actually afford it. So you can get ahead quickly, sort of thing. And again, like we've all said, there's opportunities in large companies, or particularly cool ones in niche art deco companies. Um, and also for entrepreneurs, because it's cheap and there's a lot going on, if you want to go for it, you've got real opportunities to do so here. Other stuff, again. Basically, my <laughs> career path has gone like this. But it's been very interesting, and I enjoy what I do. So sometimes it's not straightforward, and it's not you're going to do this and do it for life. Like It can be extremely rewarding if it doesn't go that day, that way. Slightly frustrating at times, but very rewarding. <coughs> Uh, and then last push that I'm allowed is uh, I've just started a charity with my girlfriend. I understand that you guys are all interested in sustainability. So what we do is collect neglected tents from festival campsites in New Zealand and send them to uh, a refugee island in Greece. So my partner's just volunteered on that island and came home. Um, I'm being a very supportive boyfriend. But it is for a great cause. It's, there's a horrible waste issue at these festivals and these guys need those tents. So. Basically, look us up, give us a like or follow. Um, that'd be cool. But I think that's all. Thank you very much to all four of you. Sam, I've got to say, uh, I don't think that's the career of a drunk three-legged donkey at all. It's actually a, a fascinating career. It's taken you to some really interesting places. So just a reminder to all of you that you can ask a question via the app. There's the pin up there, 8316. So please do send in your questions for our panel. Um, I wondered if I could start with you, Meg, because you spoke about uh, some of your um, uh, your mentors, and I'm just wondering how, uh, when you decided you needed one, how you found one, and how they've helped you. Yep, um, I think it's working. Yep, yeah. they just sort of came to me. Um, <laughs> uh, they adopted me, and I couldn't get rid of them really. Um, <laughs> and uh, sort of through opportunities I was given, um, I got quite a few Hort New Zealand scholarships. And through that, they offer a mentorship program. Um, so I was quite fortunate to go on three of those mentorship programs where um, I was paired with people who have actually not just only supported me for the two-day conference, three-day conference, they kept in touch with me post, offered me opportunities, and assisted with my networking um, through job opportunities. I think um, I've... I've been quite fortunate to have quite a few jobs quite early on in my career through practicum experiences and um, jobs through my education. Um, those people have stuck with me and, and still support me in my growing now. And the other three of you, have you had mentors in your career? Have you sought them out? Have you stumbled across any? Or have you started acting as a mentor for anybody else? I don't think I've had anything so formal as a mentor. Um, obviously, mum and dad are my biggest support crew, always. Um, and I think I've just been really fortunate to have, at Lincoln, uh, lecturers do literally know your name and is a very open door policy. And so having that kind of relationship with the lecturer not only helps you in their subject, but in the opportunities after that. Um, and at Zespri, I have really supportive managers um, who are always looking out for me and have my best interests at heart. So I think it just depends at which stage of my life I've been at as to who's been very supportive and not so formal as mentor, but have definitely acted like that, I suppose. Hannah? Um, my boss currently would probably be my biggest mentor. Um, she's helped me get to where I am now. I'm not quite sure I would be in the position I am without her. Um, and I have 
not so done much. Sorry, not so much done mentoring. Um, but I have had two lots of Sacred Heart High School girls come and work with me, um, and see what it's like to work in tourism. Um, as part of their work experience, and that's actually been really rewarding and lots of fun. And I missed out last year because I was on maternity leave, um, so I was a little bit gutted. <laughs> Sam. Yeah. No. Um, <laughs> But I'm a, I want one. <laughs> when I am actually in the process of um, being obviously in my job, you get to network with a few people, and I'm, I'm getting in touch with people at the moment uh, about it. But yeah, I guess informally you always have your bosses or directives of companies that you look up to. Um, but yeah, nothing formal at this stage, but I am in the process. I think they're hugely beneficial. Yeah. Well, you might get shoulder tapped by some of the people in the room to be a mentor, so keep an ear out for that one. Um, Hannah, I know you said that you, with your path that um, the steps you took that didn't work out or you found weren't for you were helpful in the end, but I wondered if there was anything that, that your careers advisor or your teachers could have said to you or equipped you with that might have got you to the right fit any sooner. Um, most definitely. I think when you're in high school, it is really scary to think about a job for life. You, you're 18, 17, 18. Um, and I know for myself that I was quite apprehensive about settling down into a career. Um, you're often pushed to go to uni, and I'm not always sure if that's a really good fit for most. I mean, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, I wish that for myself I had just taken a year's break or so um, and really looked at what I was interested in um, and what I wanted to be. But also at the same time, I think, yeah, those steps that I took have pushed me into tourism um, and into a job that I love. So. Mm. Um, Haraina, there's a question here for you from Emma. Are there pathways oh, for Māori to advance within the horticulture industry for those who haven't been through university? So can people move from being pickers or in the pack house to being in roles like yours? I think this is a multi layered answer, but massively yes. So um, my manager, Amy, who was in one of our photos before, her career path is totally different to mine, and university is absolutely not the only way into horticulture. We need people from all over with all sorts of experiences, and I think one of the best examples of people, uh, especially Māori, moving through up into orchard management and high positions in the kiwi for industry is te kaha. So as I mentioned, down on the east coast, they have basically, they've leased out their land for the last 20 years, and now it's coming to crystallisation phase. And so in that 20 years, they've had their own people on their own orchards doing the mahi, so they say, so they've been learning the way through the ranks and they've been putting them through um, certificates and diplomas as well, so now that the 20 years is rolling over back to them, they are the orchard managers and the people who are just, the, say, the pickers or the packers, who are also very important to us, um, are, say, our RSC program or our backpackers, so mm. definitely, yes. Maybe for Hannah and for Sam, do you think that um, people discount the regions a little bit when they come to picking their careers, because you guys really sold the benefits of living in a place like Hawke's Bay, especially when you started talking about your commute and your house prices, as someone who lives in Auckland. <laughs> um, yeah, I think a lot of people look to move out of where they're from. Um, like I said, I stayed for my mum. <laughs> I'm a mummy's girl, and like, she just moved back to Napier um, from Whanganui to help me raise my little boy so I could go back to the job I love. Um, but there are benefits of staying, You've, you know, you can call on so many different people that you have grown up with as well. Um, I haven't managed to buy a house yet, but one day, <laughs> one day soon, but it is a beautiful place and you can get yourself really sorted and situated if you've grown up there, like you know everyone and you can shoulder tap people, you can say, hey look, I did this for you this day, can you, can you help me out, like, and yeah. Yeah, I think it does get overlooked. Well, I didn't want to live in Hawke's Bay when I left school straight away. I didn't really put much forethought into my future, which is obvious now. But I, I don't know. It wasn't until we, I went overseas, or I did university, and then friends started moving back here that I saw the benefits of coming back here. Originally, I'd probably wanted to live somewhere else. And now that I'm here, yeah, it's great. Mm. Um, but yeah, definitely, the young guys at school, if you talk to a lot of the leavers who go to university, I bet the first thing they say is I want to go overseas or somewhere else. Mm. And then slowly in a cycle you end up back next to your mum. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, there's a question here on the app for you, Sam. I'm fascinated that with your background in destiny in farming, that you chose to study an arts degree. So what led you to that? And how do you feel the skills you gained contribute to the various roles you've had? Um, I've always been very interested in history. So that's kind of what went into the arts. And then while I was there, I did a paper in medium film and communication and quite enjoyed that as well. I was pretty fascinated by that industry. And I think we, you have to learn a lot from history to be useful in the future. I, one thing I learned was you walk backwards into the future. So, yeah, that's kind of why, again, forethought, not that much, just interested in it. Does anyone just want to put up their hand and ask a question? I know not everybody's into the anonymity of the app. You're more than welcome to put your hand up. I know I, when I say this in conferences, a tumbleweed rolls through, but not here. Someone down the front. Do you just want to um, jump up and thank you? So, Sam, how does your arts degree contribute to, to what you do now? How do you use those skills? Yeah, good question. <laughs> uh, if I'm looking for downy mildew or other diseases and crops, <laughs> not highly applicable. But dealing with people, definitely. Um, history gives you a whole perspective of the world and how the world and different cultures work. So, and that to, yeah, on that side of things, definitely with patients and dealing with people, great. Scientific knowledge about crop diseases and pest identification, not so good. Hmm. Um, there's a nice broad question here. Oh, another one from the floor. We'll take one more here. I think it's about sharing those those positive stories and actually getting those other career opportunities out there about travelling the world and, and sharing New Zealand's story because we've got an awesome story to tell. Um, people don't... The, the move towards um, mechanised processes. We need computer analysts. We need engineers. Uh, some of the people we went on the IHIP trip with were um, mechatronic majors, two of the boys. Um, already thinking in that sort of headspace of the future, um, I think uh, somebody quoted some numbers yesterday. Of, um, there's a shortage of 700 at a diploma level and 200 at a bachelor level alone in the pit fruit industry. So you consider that across horticulture. We need, we need people looking at forward thinking careers and, and to actually see those careers implemented. Yeah, I fully agree with Megan. I think it's frustrating every time I speak to kids or uni students and I say, what jobs exist in the kiwi fruit industry? And the only three that they can name off the top of their head are picking, packing, and driving trucks. Sometimes driving forklifts if they're really, really, you know, into horticulture. Um, <laughs> and we're blessed in the Bay of Plenty that you can't go anywhere without seeing either a kiwi fruit orchard or an avocado orchard. And down here is very much the same with your horticulture products as well. Um, but yeah. Opening the eyes, as Meg said, framing it in a way that appeals to them. You, you can travel and you can see the world, and we need all sorts of people. We need yeah, computer scientists, we need geneticists, we need what we do, which is <laughs> speak to people a lot. Um, you need everything in the industry, but more than happy to get, for you to get in touch with us any time. Um, I've done a few like Skype, this, hey, this is what we do in Zespri, presentations to schools before. So yeah, more than happy for you to do that for you guys, whatever helps. Well, those are four fascinating stories, so just ask you to put your hands together for Meg, Helena, Hannah and Sam.